We are back in Cornwall. So nice to be home. Gosh, I missed it. And today I thought I would do a still life study in my studio. Uh, those three pears that I got from a friend, she grew it in her garden. And I'm going to do focus on um, getting the planes and it an anatomically correct. So um, to really observe them. So I hope that you'll enjoy this video and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Let's begin. I'm just marking some areas to place where the pears will be. I like the, the, you know, the tea towel thing across there. I might have to just bring it in a bit. Um, so I'm looking for kind of the, the angles, the kind of the jauntiness makes the composition. So I have to make sure that I get, get the, um, the rhythm of it, I guess. Decided to have that one falling over away from it to help with the composition too. Decided that I want <clears throat> them to be a bit higher on the board to fill this space a bit more else it's, it's not, the composition isn't strong enough. So, and also this pair is slightly higher than this pair. So I have to just make sure that's right. He's got a wide top, he's a skinny top. And then I look for the, the shape between the two as well. So the negative shape in here, make sure I get that right too. And this one is not next to, you know, it's not touching like the other two, it's slightly away from it. I'm looking for the kind of the the overall shape of that. So I think that's good enough to start the blocking in now. I'm using uh, Rosemary Co's mainly. This is an ultimate short flat number eight. Um, I also use Pro Art as well, the B and A hog ones. So I'm going to look for the planes. I'm squinting my eyes and um, I'm going to put the darks in first. And I'm also going to go, um, what's it called, Alla Prima. So I'm not going to use much, um, what's it called, medium or anything to thin it. So the colours I've used here to mix up is ultramarine, yellow ochre and cad yellow. There's a shadow in there for where it touches. Otherwise, this is lit on here. And this obviously is lit in there. So there's a light, medium and darker tone. So I'm going to put it into three tones. Um, these two pairs are obviously a similar colour. This one has got riper quicker. I'm going to mix a little bit more yellow ochre into that this colour because it's slightly yellower than that one. I think it needs to be a, a cad yellow as well because that was too warm. Still a bit warm I'd say. So I'm now going lemon yellow. Sometimes you have to kind of feel it out. That's better isn't it? Not worrying too much about the brown top at the moment, this little kind of brown hat it's got. Uh, just getting in the shapes. I'm gonna do that for the, I'm just wiping my brush. I don't want to get any terps on it. Uh, if you know, watch my videos, you can hear Nick coming down the stairs. Um, so I'm obviously filming this in my studio myself. Um, he's unpacking and settling in. Um, thank you to those who have followed our journey. Uh, we had 13 weeks away um, going around Europe and the UK. It's been pretty amazing. So do have a look at my videos if you've missed them. So I need to make sure this is dark enough, this yellow. So I've got yellow ochre, cad yellow and some uh, cerulean blue. It's quite warm too. 
quite a tricky color that. This is going to be like my first layer, so I'm going to put more on there. I'm going quite loose. Although it's observed, it can still be loose. I'm going to get the mid-tone in now. I'm using cad yellow, yellow ochre and white. Possibly a touch of Scarlet Lake in there too. Surprisingly warm, the, the yellow in there. I'm, can you see I'm kind of sculpting the, the brush stroke in the way that the, um, the pear is shaped. So as it goes, um, towards the top, it's cooler and lighter. So I've added a bit of the green from the pear in there. And now back to these. Um, I'm going to do the mid, mid tone in that. I've added a little bit of white and yellow to the ultramarine mix. I think it's a bit cooler. So I'm adding lemon yellow and white to that. Squinting my eyes and kind of looking at the shape of what the, um, what this mid-tone looks like, mid-tone shape. You can start to see that they're beginning to look more rounded now. Um, I'm going to put the lighter tone in there now. There's a soft line in there, but I haven't got that in yet. This is a cooler pair, um, this one. Cooler in colour, it's got more blue in it. So the, the light is coming in like that. So it's hitting this plane here. That is kind of the lightest bit. And this is lighter light, but still not as light as that because the sun, the light is coming in there. So it's the plane doesn't hit it so much. Um, so it just needs to show that it's slightly darker underneath. But the light of the um, tape, the What's that called? Tea towel, there we go, is also reflecting up as well. So there is a bit of light in there. It feels as though now the background needs to be put in, kind of then be able to tell where I am because it's too white at the moment. I can't really make sense of it. Um, I'm going to start the same way. I'm going to put the shadows in first. So it's a white uh, tea towel and they're the shadows I'm squinting to see how they are. So because um, this is on a video, the, the shadows look a lot stronger than they do in person. Um, I can see a lot more variation than the camera picks up. But there again, I don't want to put all of those varieties in because it's confusing for the eye so I'm just kind of checking to see the sort of whether it's warmer or cool shadow and the and how it compares to this tonal value as well so it's lighter in tonal value and cooler it's quite a good um, experiment not to use any thinner because it's very difficult um, to kind of go, what would you call it? To be tentative when you've got thick paint on your brush. So this is kind of, it's quite fun, it's quite liberating. So there's quite a lot of uh, colour um, reflection back into the, the table, the tea towel from this one. You can see the yellow in there. Um, but this one you can't see so much in there. So when I put the shadow in, I can also put more of the shape of the pair in. 
So to that bluey mix, I'm adding some of the pear color to put in over here. There's a dark color underneath it, dark tone here and a bit there too. So I'm, I'm gonna go back in now. That's kind of like the mid tone to make a darker one. I've added, I've used Ultramarine, Cad Yellow and Scarlet Red. So it's the three primaries, makes a neutral color. Just gonna wipe that off a bit more on the towel and um, get the tea towel in behind it. So this is where I, I have to stop myself going into getting some perps because normally I do this thinner in back here. So I'm looking over here that it's a little bit um, darker than there. I have to remember to put that, what's it called in too, the, the writing. I might suggest that now so I don't forget. Using a slightly smaller brush. So you could wait and have it um, do it over the top or so I've got a bit of both there. There's no right or wrong the you know at what stage you do you know you put it in a pattern on top of the material. I've slightly changed the way that that is going because I want it to be underneath the pair. With an area like this, I'm going to put in different swatches of colour. Um, and to keep it quite lively because it's quite a what would you call it, plain area. I've mixed some more yellow and um, red in there. So it's like a really pale orange. I'm also doing my brush strokes in different ways, not just one way. The main thing that I'm making sure is that the tonal value to these colour variations are all similar. So they don't stand out, you know, the tonal value. It's more about the colour than the tone. So I've covered most of the board now. Uh, I'm now going back to the pairs. To get those kind of hats on. I've used Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine and a little bit of the, um, the yellowy pear mix. I think it's a good time also to get the, um, the stems in as well. They are darker, 
than the actual what I've just been painting. So I'm using some ultramarine uh, burnt sienna and yellow ochre again. See how that is. Kind of does it, doesn't it? darker at the end of it, this end away from the light and this sits in, it's not on the edge. can't see the end of this one but I've got this kind of end of it, I was going to call it a butt then but probably not appropriate. seems to help when you put these extras in, makes it very pear-like, even though they are so rough looking still. So I've just checked the time and in case you're interested, up to now it's been 26 minutes to get this far because I obviously ed edit down most of my videos because they would be too long otherwise. Um, so it gives you an idea of what sort of the timing is. So now I want to refine. Um, I've got the basics in, uh, but they are all a bit too basic, I think. I need to make sure they're really pear shaped like. Um, get in some of the more darks under here, uh, and I think step the graduations a little bit. They're a bit too uh, plainy at the moment. So now I'm looking for small refinements, um, really observing, so comparing this bit to this bit, I can see some, a little bit of reflection from the light onto here, but also I can see some shadow coming in from this as well. And um, so that's the sort of thing I'm looking for. Uh, mid-tone between the two. So I wanted to get this um, shape here Right. It's looking for pair attributes. And this is kind of a pair attribute. So you can see that I was, I've done this as too light really. It, it ruins the shadow area. It's, the tonal value is too light, so I'm going to scrape that off. Sometimes it's good to have a little scrape back of some areas. Feels like there's more of a step between these two as well. This should be lighter, I think. And also make it kind of less like a line going down, break it up a little bit. Going back in with a darker tone and quite a, a warm shadow in there and 
it's got quite a lot of red and yellow in there. So I need to work on this pair. I haven't done much on that. I like what I've done so far. Um, I think it it gives the essence of it, but it could do with maybe a little bit more shaping. Um, So as the light's coming down there, it hits a little bit of this. Uh, it's not bright, but there is a, a difference. Helps to kind of refine the shape of it. And also in here as well, on the side of the pair here, it's quite rounded, so it's catching the light. go back into the background now and just work on getting it lighter or darker that's the kind of the main things I want to make sure it pops out the um, the pears so I think it's maybe a little bit too much though. I'm looking, I'm squinting and looking for the light areas. I don't want the um, the lines around the fruit to be too hard because it looks like they're cut outs otherwise it doesn't look right there's quite a lot of light in this back bit here because it's catching catching the light I've swapped the camera around because the light was picking up my paintbrush strokes. So you couldn't see it very well, but um, hopefully you can see it a bit better now. Uh, so I'm not liking this line here. It's still not right. Someone said to me once, every brush stroke counts. I do try and do that. I don't just kind of do willy nilly. They have a purpose. I'm just looking around now to see if there's anything else that needs some work and I think these, this tea towel needs work. 
I'm using a small flat brush, size five, and using it lightly um, on its side, and it draws quite nice lines. Because it's, this side is nearer to the light source, it's lighter. Just remember that. So I put more um, light with it, uh, suggesting the writing on here for not properly doing it. You can also get that shape of the pair a bit better too. I want to get some reflected light from there to there. It's, you can see the colour of it is on the tea towel. So I've used the scarlet red and scarlet lake I think it's called and Kind of yellow, basically a lighter version of that. These little extras just really help bring it alive. I thought that the some of these. Uh, you know, reflections in here, reflected light was, there's too many yellows now, so I need to just come in and do a, a few whiter areas where the light is really picking it up. I'm using really thick paint, which makes it stand out. Anything I want to emphasize, I'd use some of this light because it really captures the eye. I'm also looking for any highlights. So there are a couple of highlights on there, but they're not as big as that one. Um, but there are something, so I'm going to also do that too. <laughs> I'm using the same mix, but just putting some yellow and white in there. I squint my eyes to see kind of where it is. It's a little bit cool. So I'm just checking if there's anything that I've missed out. I can see that there's a little area there that I've got no paint in. So I'm going to go in and just fix that. Don't want any gaps if possible. I thought it would be helpful if we a little close up to my painting for one so you can see the brush strokes really clearly and a close up of the subject and then my palette too and my paintbrushes.
So I've got a mixture there of Rosemary & Co and Pro Art. Hope that's helpful. Well, that was an enjoyable paint. It looks a simple subject, but there's so much you can do with it. So we had three different pairs with three different colours and looked at the shapes and also simplified the tonal values down to three, light, mid and dark. Looked at where the sun was coming in, the light. And um, also really enjoyed doing that Alla Prima, which is the thick paint all in one, um, not using any turp, so it's really juicy and fun to use. Um, I have to do that again, I think. So I hope that you've enjoyed this, this video and that you will subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it if you did. And um, I've just started Patreon and that is a way of supporting me without charging for these videos. So I'd really appreciate that as well. If you have a look on my banner on my YouTube. All right, bye for now and see you next time. Thanks.